Welcome to our review on plant minerals. If we think about what our plants need to remain healthy, they need certain minerals in small amounts. Now, these minerals actually come from the soil and the way they get into the plant is by becoming dissolved in the water in the soil and then that water with the dissolved minerals is taken into the root hair cells and then travel around the plant. So if our plants don't actually have all of the required minerals, then they start to show what's called deficiency symptoms. If we want to make sure our plants are always healthy, then gardeners or farmers can actually ensure this happens by adding minerals to them. And there are a few ways that we can actually do this. The first one is we can add manure to it. Second one is we can add compost or rotting leaves. Or the third one is by adding chemical fertilizers to the soil. Now, our minerals actually get into our plant through a slightly different process to one we've looked at before. They're going to enter the plant through a process called active transport. And the reason they've got to use this different process is that the concentration of minerals in the soil is lower than the concentration of them inside the plant. So they'd be going against their concentration gradient, which obviously means that we can't use diffusion. So we use this process of active transport and it actually pumps particles against a concentration gradient. And to do that, it requires energy in the form of ATP. Now, what we'll find is if you look at the diagram on the right, you can see how this actually occurs. In the cell membrane, we've got these special proteins called carrier proteins. And then as something like our potassium, for example, comes in, it joins with the carrier protein at the top there. And then energy is used to change the shape of the carrier protein to move the mineral from the outside area to inside. Once the potassium has actually been released then, the little carrier protein returns to its normal state and then more can be passed in. Do remember, active transport goes from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration and it requires energy. We're now going to have a look at these different minerals that are needed by our plants and what we'll see if they're not present in the right quantities. So the first one is nitrogen, and this is contained in nitrates in the soil. The reason our plant actually needs these nitrogen molecules is to make amino acids, which are then used to make proteins to allow our plant to grow. So if we don't have enough nitrogen, what we'll see in our plant is it will have very poor growth and the leaves will be yellow in color. Phosphorus is our second mineral we need, and this is contained in phosphates in the soil. So we use the phosphorus in respiration to make the ATP. We'll also use it to make DNA and other molecules in the cell membrane. If we don't have enough phosphorus inside our plant, what we'll see is the roots will show very poor growth, the plant will be a bit stunted, and we'll get these purple discolorations to the leaves. The third mineral is potassium. And the reason our plant needs potassium is that in order to make the enzymes that are involved in photosynthesis and respiration, we need potassium. So if we don't get enough potassium inside our plant, we get very poor flower and fruit growth and the leaves are kind of yellowy in color with these brown spots. The last one we need to remember is magnesium. And the reason our plants need magnesium is to make chlorophyll, which obviously we need for photosynthesis so that if we don't have enough magnesium present in our plants, we get yellow leaves, especially the ones found lower down on our plant. Finally, we need to consider these fertilizers we mentioned earlier. So our fertilizers that are chemically produced list the amounts of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium as what's called the NPK ratio. Sometimes they will give you this phrase NPK and ask you what one of those letters stands for. Just remember, they are the chemical formulas. And on the very back page of your exam paper, you've got a periodic table, so you can just look them up if you don't remember. Now, what we'll find is that different fertilizers have different NPK ratios, because we won't always need the same minerals in the same amount. So by having different NPK ratios, we can then select the right fertilizer to promote the aspect of growth we want. So if we're growing a lot of fruit, then we'll select one fertilizer, whereas if we're growing something that needs to just grow taller, a different fertilizer. 